All right, it is a Wednesday, and we know the Razorback baseball season is in full swing. Midweek win against Texas Tech last night in what was thrilling fashion coming from behind down 7 to nothing to break it all down and to talk more about the Razorback baseball team. We welcome in, of course, our guest here on the John Neighbor Show. Thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown Fayetteville. It is former Razorback Tyler Spoon. And Tyler, as always, man, appreciate you joining us. How you doing? I'm good, man. What a game. What a, what a way to start the week. Yeah, like I know that anytime you win, it's always great. And anytime you can come from behind, it's always great. But what type of performance like that, what kind of confidence can that get you to where, first off, it's great about baseball. You know, it's never over till it's over. But to be able to get shellacked like that in the beginning and to claw back and to win, not even go to extra innings, just win in walk-off fashion. Just what does that do for a team and their mentality and their confidence? Yeah, especially coming off, you know, the first series loss and an offense that's been scuffling. I mean, just the confidence it can give you for an offense, especially just uh Hey, we're down seven runs. Hey, we, we can we can come back and win this thing, you know. And I, that hadn't been the case so far this year, where you know, it, you know, team goes up four or five nothing. It's like we got a giant mountain to climb. And um, but sometimes all it takes is just doing it one time to get that confidence. Of like, okay, we can do this. And I think hopefully this, again, hopefully it kind of kickstarts the offense. And you know, I think we saw we have all the potential in the world to to score seven, eight runs a game. And I think I think it's going to come. It's just a matter of when and hopefully getting the lineup completely situated and figured out. Well, I know that pitching is always you know, very important. But to see uh, there in the very, very beginning, Bybee's a guy that I feel like he, he has it and it's there, mm-hmm. but just did not have a, a really great showing there in the beginning. And then if you're Coach Van Horn, I'm just curious about how he handled because he had Fouch come in, then Wood, then Coyle, then McIntyre, then Gackle to close it out. Some of those guys are weekend guys at play. Mm-hmm. Other guys, not so much. But... When you're down big like that in the early part of it, how, how did you feel like Van Horn handled the pitching side? Because you want to win. You want to yeah. put yourself in a position, but you also don't want to exhaust anybody that you don't. So how do you feel like he handled, and him and Hobbs handled the uh, the pitching situation last night in the game to force that comeback? Honestly, it was probably a deal where, you know, you go down 7-0, it's a midweek game. So their honest opinion, their honest thought was, you know, hey, let's – we need to get some guys working that are going to pitch for us on the weekend, which is what matters most. Let's get let's get Fouch out there. Let's get Coil out there. Let's you know whoever we need to. Let's get them out there. Get some work in so that they can you know at least get some game reps and get ready for the weekend. And you know again, our staff is just so good that any of those guys are going to pitch at any school. You know, which Fouch has been pitching a lot, a lot more for us, but Coil you know hadn't, hadn't seen him a lot this year. So, um, but he's a very good pitcher. Did really well in Cape Cod, and again he could you know, be a starter for a lot of SEC teams. So. Um, probably just at first getting some of those guys some work in, and then you come back and we tie it, and you throw McIntyre, you throw Gage Wood, you go um, Gackle to close it out. I mean, it's just, yeah, it it turned out to be, again, that just speaks to the depth of this bullpen and how much how valuable it is. And then from the hitting side of things, I know that uh, we'll talk about this past weekend and losing their first SEC series, but uh, from the hitting side of things, They've had their struggles, but coming alive a little bit last night, getting guys in scoring position helped with there was a few mistakes there by Texas Tech especially. Yeah. But uh, just how do you feel like uh, from the lineup perspective, this team coming back, fighting, battling, and being able to at least manufacture and put together some runs when they need it the most? Yeah, it was good to see, especially from guys that haven't seen us, you know, as much playing time. You're you know, Wagner, you're Jason Jones had a really good night. Um, you know, just guys that, you know, you, you hope that, it will come around and I think you're probably going to start seeing those guys in the lineup a lot more. And Wagner to me, I think he, I think Wagner is going to be a piece that has so much potential and could be a very, very key piece right in the heart of the order. That is just a savvy vet been, you know, played college baseball for four years, can draw walks, get big hits, put the ball out of the, you know, out of the yard. I mean, he's got the potential to do that and just be a steady, consistent bat in the middle of the lineup. And, it's what we really, really need right now. We need that, you know, four, five, six guy that is just consistent, gonna drive in runs, gonna get on base, whatever it is. And you know, if Jason Jones comes around, we I've been saying this since day one, like the potential and the ceiling for him is unbelievable. I mean, he hit a ball 113 miles an hour off the bat that got 10 feet off the ground last night. You know, I think it was yeah. like 30 feet to the left fielder's right, and he couldn't even get to it. That's how hard it was hit. So um, the guy, the guy has a lot of upside. I think I, I, I'm hoping that we'll see him a lot more in the lineup, but. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, we, I think if we can get these guys rolling, get these guys that hopefully are starting to catch fire, I think the offense is going to continue to get better. Let me ask you about Peyton Holt because mm-hmm. he, he's a guy that had a great play there in the Alabama series, didn't win it, but had the home run. And he's been aggressive too at the plate, hitting on first pitch a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about his bat? But also moving him to center field, an outfielder, you know, you, you're an outfielder, mm-hmm. like 
he's always just been an infielder since I've known him. But what do you think about the move to him out there as well as uh, what's he been able to do with his aggression at the plate? Yeah, I think I think DBH is, you know, I think we're kind of at that point where it's like our defense is really good, and we but we need offense. So we're going to maybe start looking at sacrificing some defense early on and, you know, innings one through six, one through seven, we're going to put the offense out there, the best offensive team out there, and then start subbing in the defensive replacements um, at the end of the game. But, yeah, I, I like it. I think I think changing just getting that mindset to where, hey, we got we to gotta score a lot of runs, I think that's going to help us. But he's, you know, Hull's just such an athlete, you know, Arkansas boy. You know, there's, there's a little bit more pride to it, a little bit more – uh, behind it and he's just he's just a grinder man yeah, kind of dirt bag is what we call those get kind of guys um, but he's a dirt bag just just plays hard he's a great you got to have that guy in the lineup that's just really aggressive I mean it, it just kind of sets the tone and I, I like him hitting leadoff because he comes out of the gate swinging and just sets the tone early for that pitcher like okay these guys are gonna come out swinging and you know he he hits been hitting a lot of balls hard been you know doing a really good job and I like I like it. I love the way he's playing. Um, I think he he could be an, another key piece for us moving forward. And um, if he just continues to play the way he is and just good at bats, aggressive at bats, just hitting the ball hard, it's going to be you know if you lead him off. Especially, it's going to be really good to have him and see him come around and get some more playing time. I think dirt that's bag. good to see. Yes, dirt bag. Dirt bag. So, so can, can you explain that term for me? Like what a dirt? What so the term a dirt from? bag is basically you think of the guy that like. He's not going to be the the flashiest, you know, hit 30 home runs. He's not going to hit 400, 500. He's not going to, you know, just screen the ball all over the yard, but he is going to be – it's a guy that just like that pesky – you think about a team you play, the pesky, annoying guy that always is on base, always full max effort no matter what. You know, you look up at the end of the game and he's literally just covered in dirt, like one of those guys where – He's in the middle of everything. He, one of those guys, and he's always a key piece to every single game. I mean, it, it, that's just the dirt. To me, that's the dirt bag. It's it's like a, one of the most important pieces for an offense. You got to have the guy that just is a grinder and just finds a way and finds a will. And is his you know his talent may and he's by the way Payne Holt's very talented, but a lot of times a dirt bag is maybe not as talented, but like the will and the heart to do it is so is so much higher. And he finds a way to get it get it done. He wants it more than the other guy. So. Um, yeah, that's that's what a dirt bag is overall, and then he's he's kind of that piece for us, I think. See, I learned, I learned something now about the dirt bag. That's I, it. Yeah. So, who was the dirt bag when you were playing? <clears throat> I would probably say Serrano. I could see that. Yeah, he, <laughs> I could see yeah. that. <clears throat> Serrano was just a guy that he just found a way. He just you know made it happen, got it done, no matter what. And and you know he was a little bit more calm of a dirt bag, if that makes sense. But um, you know he just again he was just a grinder, just gritty grindy just got it done found a way on base and you know it was a key piece in that top of the order for us speaking with former Razorback Tyler Spoon here on the John Neighbor Show thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown Fayetteville uh, yeah so going back also to the, the, the whole situation because you know play, baseball players change positions I know we've talked about with you and mm -hmm. you were outfield but you played a little bit of catcher too and, and got involved but going from as great of an athlete hold is but from out from infield yeah. essentially he's been to the outfield I mean, how difficult of a jump is that? And is it, I don't say easy, but is it easier to go from infield to outfield or outfield to infield if that's what you're used to? Much easier to go infield to outfield. Yeah, I mean, I, I played infield growing up, you know, and going to outfield, it really just takes, you know, you get a good, you know, two, three weeks of just getting fly ball reads in batting practice or whatever it is. It's pretty easy to make that transition. Now, you know, you're not going to be perfect at it, but, you know, it's, gonna, it's a lot easier to do. But going from the outfield, never having infield experience, Ground balls are a different, different game. And then you, you know, think about making the throws consistently. You know, from the outfield, you can just kind of let it eat and air, you know, let it fly. If you short hop, no big deal. If you throw it over, over the cutoff's head, then usually there's a guy backing up. But um, infield, you just got to be a lot more precise. And, you know, you're, you have to have really soft hands, really good hands. And so it's a, it's a skill. It's a craft. And that's why infielders are so valuable, especially shortstops. And so, um, yeah, the, the transition to outfield is, is a – probably the easiest transition to make as far as like defensively from position to position so also I know last night's game was great but Arkansas did play Alabama on the road lost their first SEC series so now we can go away from that because we, we, we I know you've talked about it to go undefeated in SEC series is dadgum near impossible so it's mm -hmm. going to happen but as as much as it's expected it's still is not something you want to see especially in game three not scoring any runs because you can't win if you can't score yeah. But what did you just make from that series in particular and some of the things that maybe 
stood out to you the most as far as the reasons why Arkansas, other than that scoring, but why Arkansas came up short in that series against a quality Alabama team? Yeah, I mean, credit to Alabama. Alabama's a good team. They're not, you know, it's not a, you know, they're not the top four or five. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe they're a top four or five team now, but um, they're a very, very good team. I mean, they're we're going to see, they're going to put play A&M this week, but um, I'm trying to remember, they just they beat someone really good here, you know, a couple weeks ago. I mean, they're they're a very very talented baseball team and have the ability to beat anybody. So, um, but again, on the road in the SEC, you never know. You look at Florida. Florida has been the most up and down team all year, and they took two out of three from A&M at home. So it's just you never know. Um, better than getting swept for sure. But I think also just the timely hits didn't come. You know, they they pitched really well. Um, it didn't seem like we took advantage of pitches early on that we probably should take advantage of um, against Alabama. Uh, but again, an environment on the road, it's, it's just tough. It's tough to win. It is very, very tough to win. It's, it's going to be the same story with South Carolina this weekend too. I mean, that's a uh, founders park is a tough place to play and those fans are rowdy and South Carolina is good. So um, yeah. And you know, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I kind of hope we will lose at least one or two more series. So um, you, you, but as a, as a coach, you know, you, you've got to have a team that has gone through adversity yeah. and come out of that adversity to make sure, like, to know that they have that toughness. You know, losing one series, whatever. But if you can have a team that loses two or three and they find a way to get it done after that, you sometimes you just got to go got to go through the valley sometimes. Mm-hmm. You got you to find a way to uh, get over that hump because you're going to get to regional, super regional, and you're going to be down three to two in, you know, game three, super regional, or game four in a regional, and – you got to find a way to get it done, and you know you may lose that first game, second game in a regional, and you got to come back and win. So, um, losing series is not the end of the world. It tells you a lot about your team, and if your team's not tough enough to come back after losing one or two series, then they're not tough enough to win a regional, super regional. So, how many series when you were playing in that uh, College World Series here in the SEC did y'all win? Uh, totally. I think we won seven. Okay, I think that that because I thought that was the case, but then yeah. I was trying to put it all together. But yeah, uh, which is which is great. Yeah, you know that's yeah. that's a really good number to get to. Yeah, it, but it's just crazy, like thinking about like how how baseball is getting that winning, going seven and three, essentially an SEC mm-hmm. series, but still not hosting. You know, and, yeah. and, and getting to that point, uh, it, that's kind of the thing where I agree. If if you lose another SEC series, it's fine, but protecting the home, yeah, home field, which Arkansas has done great this year too, mm-hmm. but. Uh, that's something that also can help you, but benefits you once you get to the postseason. Is having the yeah. regionals and supers at home. You're going to play no matter what. Arkansas has gotten to the World Series a few times when they didn't even host. Mm-hmm. But there's always some element of being able to host those games at home, and especially when you're a really good pl- program and team at home like Arkansas is this year. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, and that's the that's the good thing about starting 12 and one is you get a little bit more leeway, so you can look at you know. You have 18 games left. You can go nine and nine, and you look up and you have you've won 21 games in the SEC. You're going to host. You're going to 21 and nine in the SEC is unbelievable. Like you're going to host. You hopefully you're a, a you know national seed where you can hope host regional, super regional. But um, man, you get to 20 wins in the SEC, you're you're guaranteed to host. I mean, at, at 100% guaranteed to host. So it's just a matter of whether it's a national seed or not. So. Uh, and this year, you know, the SEC is pretty top heavy. So it's, you know, you have Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, A&M. Those are the four, you know. So um, those are, I wouldn't say they're locks right now, but they, the probability of them hosting are very, very good. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, if we're a super re- or, or a national seed or just host regional or, you know, just a top 16 seed. So former Razorback Tower Spoons, our guest here on the John Neighbor Show, thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown Fayetteville. Talked a little bit about South Carolina coming up this weekend. Mm-hmm. South Carolina is a great program. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of history. Uh, I know Ray Tanner had, had a lot of history there too. Yeah. But you talk about difficult place to play. SEC's got a lot of great ballparks, but I'll agree. There's always been some element about there at South Carolina. So what do you make of that series in particular, but also why is it such a tough place to play? Is it just the crowd or does it go a lot further than that? Yeah, it's the crowd. I mean, the crowd is pretty rowdy there at South Carolina. They love baseball in South Carolina. I mean, you know, you just think about you have South Carolina, you have Clemson, North Carolina, NC State, Duke, you know, Coastal Carolina, all those Mm -hmm. teams, you know, in the Carolinas themselves, you've got six top 20 teams, top 25 teams. So, uh, baseball, baseball is runs deep there. So, uh, they're passionate, they're rowdy. They're, you know, kind of like Arkansas fans, they're rowdy, but uh, not as good as Arkansas fans. Obviously, of course not. But, of course not. Um, but it's going to be, it's a nice stadium. It's going to be packed. There's going to be six, 7,000 people there. So, um, it's just a rowdy environment, you know, and especially the hogs coming in town. I mean, you know, top 20 matchup, it's going to be a good one. So, um, and they're a good team. 
the end of the day, they're they you know Ethan Petrie, you know quietly is having a good year. hadn't been as great as probably he wanted, like a you know Condon or a Caglino, like people thought. But um, guy's going to have twenty home runs, so um, it's going to be a fun matchup. It's going to be a tough place to play, tough environment, and you know you you win two out of three at South Carolina. That's a really really good weekend. Yeah, and I know it's not till further down the road, but I, I was laughing about seeing the schedule. It's always tough in the SEC no matter what, but you're always hopeful that you can get mm -hmm. one or two series. And I remember looking before the year, I was like, okay, well, they got Kentucky on the road this year or whatever. It'll be, and now Kentucky, like one of the best teams. Never I, I, I don't know if you've watched a lot of them or anything, but like how are they doing what they're doing? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure, don't they have turf for their pitchers mound? It's crazy. I mean, come on. Like, how, how is that working? Yeah, I don't, I don't even think Kentucky saw this coming. Like, I, you know. You can't. You can never expect to go fourteen and one in the SEC. And here's the deal: they haven't played the toughest SEC schedule to, to date, but it's an SEC schedule. Still and fourteen that, and know, one. At the end of the day, their only loss is Mizzou. You know, and it, again, like I said, in the SEC, you never know. Florida beats two out of beats A and M two out of three, and then they get swept by Mizzou. It's just like chaos ensues. So the fact that they've been able to go fourteen and one is just. Highly, highly impressive. If I'm a Kentucky fan, I'm a little bit more worried because I'm like, if we're playing really, really good baseball right now. I don't want to be doing this right now. So, uh, but yeah, it's been there, man. They just keep it, it, Kentucky always starts off hot. It seems like, and then it seems like they get to SEC and start to fizzle out. Well, they keep getting better. So this is a different Kentucky than I'm used to seeing. So, um, but they play uh, Mr. Vitello and the boys this weekend, and I'm and I, there's bad blood that they do not like each other, and it's going to be. A fun series. I, I'm probably more excited to watch that one than the Arkansas series. I got to say. Well, it's funny that like again, <clears throat> it, I believe you, but just funny baseball fans here in Kentucky and Tennessee is it's a weird. Rivalry. It's yeah. It's like the, of the two programs, other than when Tony V got there to Tennessee, mm -hmm. haven't really been you know part of the whole regime of greatness, but yet they hate each other. So, but hey, that's that's usually makes for the most weird and wacky type of series too. Yes, it does. And you know, they used to be the Mizzou of you know, when I was playing, it was like, oh, we got Kentucky, oh, we got Tennessee. There's there's a series win. Yeah. So uh chalk it up. So it's you know, but Tennessee always had the potential of like you get the right person in there, you get, you know, Tony B in there, that place has got the potential potentials through the roof. But Kentucky's always just a place where it's like it's a basketball school. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know. Not a lot else there, you know. No. So, um, but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting one. I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm sure Kentucky and Tennessee fans hate each other. Yeah. I mean, I've, everyone seems to not like the Tennessee fans. It's just kind of how it works. But wonder why. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. I, I'm I'm excited to watch that one. And then playing at you know, of course, you finally get Vanderbilt off the schedule. You don't have yeah. Georgia on the schedule, and then you turn around, and you have kentucky and you're like okay that'll be a decent series for arkansas to have this year and then it's like they got it now they're a top five team uh, now we've got a top five series on the road um against one of the best teams in the country so you know it's just how the sec is man again it just makes it so much more impressive that a team like kentucky has gone 14 and one because some of the teams they beat they may look up and they're in omaha you, you mm -hmm. just never know so i want to take you back to a play from last night for, for on two sides of it one the walk-off that arkansas <clears> had <throat> and shading putting in nolan souza which true freshman, all that worked out, obviously. Yeah. So I'll, I'm curious about what you think about that move. And also, maybe it's just my me being naive. That Texas Tech formation where they had five infielders mm -hmm. in there and two outfielders, I hadn't seen that at least in, in college baseball, major level college baseball. So what do you think of the move by Susan? Also, is that something you've seen or is common where you see Texas Tech in that type of formation in the infield when the game's on the line? I have been that guy at the oh, University yeah. of Arkansas. I, okay. I would have brought in, yeah, it's, I think I did it twice where, you know, it's bottom of, you know, bottom of the ninth, top of the ninth, whatever it is. You know, it's always bottom, we're on the road, bottom of the mm -hmm. ninth. And it's like, they get it to the outfield, they're going to win anyway. You just want to keep, you, you, the strategy there is you want to eliminate as many ground balls getting through the infield as possible. So, um, yeah, I, you just do it. You just pinch the outfielders, one's left center, one's right center. And if the ball's shallow enough, you're going to get to it anyway, and you're going to throw mm -hmm. them out. And if if it's hit at the same depth of the, of the outfielders, you're probably not getting them anyway. So, yeah. Well, it was, that changed the dynamic, though. Like, I feel like, you know, as a baseball player, if you're a shortstop, it's routine. Like, hey, you catch a ball. Like, I mean, hmm. you, I'm sure it's something you have to, of course, practice. Yeah. But I feel like that that could really screw up a little bit of the – whole routine when you when you shift to that wouldn't it yeah it, it's it's definitely you know again for me it was a little different because I was coming in from the outfield but um you know everyone's everyone's playing in on the grass in that point you know everyone's kind of just you know you're basically taking away ground balls and so right. 
you really don't have time to have the depth and the, the range that you normally have. So like, you know, uh, Aloy trying to go to his left, you know, normally he would be able to get the balls at the middle, but if you have that fifth guy there, he, he won't have time to get it. So that's why you put him there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a little different. And as a hitter, it's a different look too. You almost got to think about, well, and I try to hit a fly ball or whatever, but, um, you know, pinch it and Susan, that situation though, I think was the right call because I think that closer was very good. His numbers were eye popping. I think he does, he has a really good slider and gets a lot of righties out. So I think just putting a lefty in in that situation where you can take away, you know, try to take away the, the slider and, you know, make it come into a lefty as opposed to away from a righty. Um, good good call there. Probably not as good in numbers against lefties as he does against righties. Yeah. I think it's just, again, I keep bringing it up, but it's just cool. True freshman. It's like, yeah, you know, game on the line. Put, yeah. him, into that, put him in that position because that's who we feel most confident can come in there and, and make it happen. Like that just, yeah. just again – Shows how talented that kid is, in Nolan Souza. Yeah, he's he's gonna be really good for us, hopefully for the years to come. Yeah, so. yeah. It's like I saw him last night when he was walking down the field. I'm like, this guy does. He's like just the way he's built and everything. He just doesn't look like a true freshman. It's huge. Yeah, ginormous. Uh, yeah. So they got they got the they got the win last night, and uh, now you got the game, of course, today and happening right now as as we speak. But uh, I'm curious that midweeks are always tough, but this is a tough midweek series. You know, mm-hmm. it's a Texas Tech team that's good. And then you I hate to say a quick turnaround, which you're probably used to, but in the midweek you have a game that was at seven last night, mm-hmm. didn't get over with until about close to eleven. Yeah. Quicker turnaround. This game's gonna be mid afternoon. So just for the midweek and making sure that you manage it the right way to get ready for the traveling and the weekend, just how do you feel Van Horn manages all of that? Yeah, the worst part about the whole midweek playing seven o'clock and eleven thirty is you gotta go to dang school in the morning. You got class in the yeah, morning. Yeah, that that's, that's literally the <laughs> yeah. worst part of everything. So um yeah it's it's one of those deals you just try to you know you'll probably see a different lineup tonight this is you know you, you want to win this you want to win both games but at the same time you don't want to you want you don't want guys to get to friday saturday and they're just exhausted because they played eight games in you know nine ten days whatever it is so you'll probably see you know you'll see Diggs back in there you'll see you know uh who else didn't play wilmsmeyer i don't mm-hmm. think wilmsmeyer started uh, you'll see the guys that didn't play last night probably in there tonight just uh, again try to rotate guys in and out just to get them some rest and Hopefully they're not wore out by Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So, um, yeah, the strategy's tough. And, again, the hard part is just getting up, going to class, and actually doing it. And then you got to, after that, yeah, go go play another game. So it's it's tough. Well, I know that uh, we're not going to have a chance to talk with you uh, until after this, but I, I wanted your thoughts. Arkansas does go down to Dickie Stevens' ballpark next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's a midweek game. They do this every single year. Yeah, It's a great crowd. But yeah. For whatever reason, hasn't always been – great for Arkansas's yeah. wins because even in the wins they had it seemed like it was always a struggle but what do you just make of going down there and the, that type of atmosphere that type of situation but also maybe why the games haven't always gone Arkansas's way when they traveled there awesome ballpark the absolute worst batter's eye you can't see the ball because the batter's eye is like even with the pitcher's neck so the ball is coming up above the batter's eye in the clouds and you can't you can't pick it up I could never see a ball when we played at Dickie Stevens so Someone is down there. If, yeah. if you're listening in Little Rock and you have some money to donate, get a bigger batter's eye at Dickie Stevens. Make it bigger so the guys can actually see the ball when the pitcher's throwing it. It is you can't see anything. That's my excuse, but I'm <laughs> I'm very passionate about it. If you can't tell, yeah. but um, I I loved playing down there and hated playing down there because of that reason. Because it was like I I can't see the ball. I yeah. can't pick up spin. I can't do anything. It's just like you're just picking one pitch and trying to pick the spot and go with it. It is so hard to see. So how how I don't understand. That's a minor league ballpark. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like just, okay, well, high school <clears throat> kids play there. I mean, you're talking about yeah. trying to develop pro prospects. I feel like that would be something you like want to fix or you want to have made right. Like, I don't I know. understand why that's the case there. I know. I know I'm not the only person that's complained about it, so it's not yeah. just me. But, uh, yeah, you'd think that someone would – Mm-hmm. figure that out so well, i'm glad you uh, cracked the code now that i can tell people like hey why do i always lose and yeah in north little rock and dickie stevens like well it's batter's eye it's man. almost guaranteed it's going to be a three to two game it's like how it always goes i feel like there so uh you know hopefully hopefully they play the game you know now sometimes you get like a seven o'clock eight seven thirty game where it's dark and you can see a little bit better but um man when you start that game and the lights and the sun's still out you cannot see the stupid ball it's impossible so um yeah that's that's you know it's going to be a low-scoring game if it's an earlier game, like a five o'clock game or something. So yeah, it's just I wish there was a way because I feel bad. I really do. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Fayetteville kid. Everyone knows that, but 
Arkansas sports just does not perform well in Central Arkansas. It's, crazy. I, it's so weird. You know, War Memorial games. The crowd's great. It's yeah, awesome. I know that's what's unfortunate is that the crowds are great because even when they go to play at Simmons Bank Arena in basketball, mm-hmm. they've won. But then there's games they lost to Hofstra down there. You know, and then Arkansas baseball. I guess what was it last year? They lost to uh, this team that escaped me that they lost to in, down there in North Little Rock. But yeah, it was a team that should have beaten. And I remember hearing some of the players say that was one of the maddest that Dave Van Horn was after a game. So yeah. I mean, it's it's like it's, come on, throw a bone in Central yeah. Arkansas. It's like, dude, you know, just not making excuses, but yeah, they got to have some sort of good luck down there instead of losing or struggling in all three sports. But hopefully, it's hopefully tough. that changes. Uh, hopefully that happens and then ends up being better for them. But hey, it's always going to be uh, a lot of fun with baseball and Tyler. I know, of course, Bank of Fayetteville is the sponsor of this segment, and we enjoy having you on. So uh, just Bank of Fayetteville, man. Uh, Again, weather's getting nicer, thank yeah. goodness. But uh, just yeah. uh, how's everything going out over there at Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown? Man, it's going great. Uh, we're just kind of, again, just being in the community. That's all it is for us. We're just that community local bank for you guys. And, um, again, we're, we're just trying to be involved and get out there and meet as many people as possible. And just, again, be I've talked about it before, just be at the forefront of all the growth and just helping people with their banking needs or whatever it is. So, again, if you have a dollar or a billion dollars, we want to help you. So that's kind of our mindset at the bank and just – um, again, just help the people around here, but, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to get really involved with this community, you know, um, you know, any local teams, sports teams, youth teams, whatever it is, we want to get involved and help people out. So, uh, but it's been great, great people, um, love, love the people over there. It's been a great work environment. So I've, you know, it's, it's a great place. Tyler Spoon, former Razorback joining us here on the John neighbor show each and every week. Thanks to the bank of Fayetteville. Tyler, appreciate it, man. Have a great fun weekend. Hopefully we Catch up with you next week talking about uh, another SEC series victory and getting ready for a big one against Florida. But we always appreciate it, man, and uh, have a good weekend. All right. Appreciate it, John.